I'm Carla Martinelli Irvin. I am the founder and executive director of the Winnipeg Pet Rescue Shelter. There was no such thing as a no-kill shelter before us, and I felt that there was a real need in the community, and I wanted a place where people could go, where if for some reason they needed to give up their pet, they would be assured that it would not be put to sleep. But everybody told us that that wasn't possible. There would, there's no such thing, you can't do it. But I just believed that God gave everything more than 24 hours. Before we dealt with strictly Winnipeg, now we're dealing with Manitoba. So that's a whole different ball game. That's sometimes receiving phone calls at 4 a.m. that a litter has been found or a dog is in distress and it's a matter of, you know, getting the flights booked, pick them up from the airport, get them here, treated for whatever ailments they have, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they have ailments. We are a true no-kill shelter. We will take these animals, even if they're injured or sick, and we will treat them um, until they're better. What matters to us is that animal can live a good quality life. Basically what we're seeing is a lot more ailments and illnesses. These aren't just family owned pets. You know, they're coming in with lesions, illnesses, broken bones. We don't say no. When we know that we can reach out and help, we're gonna take them in, whether it be having to reset a broken leg or treating for mange, which is sometimes several months. When we have animals that come into our shelter who have been battered, who have been neglected, who have been beaten, set on fire, um, sometimes it takes a day, sometimes it takes a year to get them well, but we do it. We hang in there with the animal. And we have to make the dogs right and the cats right before we send them home. You know, we have a, a dog here by the name of Joey. He was running around in a northern community. He was attacked by large dogs. His eye had been gouged out, broken teeth. He required so much work to get him to the stage of adoptability. And he deserved that. And he's so beautiful. I mean, he's the perfect dog. We really are helping very, very needy, sometimes very ill animals. You know, I'm not sure that humans would survive some of the disasters these guys encounter, and it's really very, very resilient. I will say that in most cases we've actually been able to turn them around, and it does take a lot of time. Uh, we do the initial stuff, and a lot of the nursing is done by the staff at Pet Rescue Shelter. They've been very diligent. They work till late at night, come in weekends. Uh, there's a chain of caring people that are involved in the ultimate adoption of, of any one dog or cat. There's something very remarkable. It's always a, almost as if they're really grateful for being saved because they turn out to be the most loving pets. We're lucky to be working very closely with the vet and he does whatever he can to save the shelter money. But even at our special cost, we are still looking at an abundance of vet bills. We rely strictly on the kindness of the community to help us. You know, it costs a lot of money to get a health check done, to get vaccinations done. There's the daily care, there's the food. It's the heat, the hydro, the rent. We cannot do this without the community support. A lot of people don't realize that a small donation, like $10 a month, to be part of our Helping Hero program, how far that goes. We would not have saved a thousand animals a year if it were not for the, the community helping us. But we need the ongoing support because we can truly make a difference together in the animals' lives. <laughs>